So today, let's go over constructing a melodic solo. So what we're gonna do is break down kind of the thinking process that went behind it, you know, figure out how to write our own solos. Don't be afraid also to click the link down below. Always something cool down there for you. All right, let's zoom in for a closer look. All right, so let's break down the thinking process behind constructing a solo. Now, if we're just trying to construct kind of a melodic solo, one of the easiest things to do is directly outline the chords. Now, we're working in G major. Our chords are G, D, E minor, C for a couple rounds, and then I'm gonna go down to B flat, F, and then to G to resolve. So what I did in the beginning, when I hit that G chord, I'm gonna do a riff like this. Okay, now why I did that is right here, you have the G chord itself, right? And what I did by doing that riff, this is the first position in G major pentatonic, right? Looks just like E minor, right? So by barring these two guys right here, which is the 15th fret of the B and the E, and then bending the 14th fret of the G, what I'm essentially doing is bending this note to the third, the major third of that G chord. Right, so I have, but, Bending into that note adds just some awesome tension to it, and then you get a great resolve when you hit that major third. Now from there, it goes to a D chord. So I went. Right, hitting the top note of this D chord. Well, not necessarily the top note. If you don't count the root note, right, the G, second fret out of this D chord. We're up here, so it's the 14th fret. But I'm directly taking another group of notes out of the chord, right? So from there, I went. Now right there is going over the E minor to C progression. So by sliding in right here, I'm already starting to outline my E minor chord. So I went, both of those notes are in E minor. B is also in the E minor. Right? And that gets me back to, so it would be. can do is hit notes directly out of those chords, right? Now you can use all sorts of different, you know, ideas right there on the G. We could do a riff like that, sliding in. Then when I go to D, can do something like that. Right? You're using the G major scale as an outline, but as I went to this E minor chord, right, we could go right, because I know I'm resolving to C, hit that C note. Right, come back in here. Hit that G note right there. Start the whole process over. Now what I chose to do in that after I did my... Now what I did was I'm just gonna outline all the notes. In all of the different chords, we have our D, 
right? E minor, D there again, right out of the G. So each time you're coming into that next turnaround or that next chord, you're hitting a note that is directly in that chord. It comes directly from that chord itself. Now from there, it starts back over. And what I did was I took third position of the major pentatonic. Right, so we're drawing directly again from that G chord, the kind of Hendrix riffs. Right, kind of stuff that you can do. I, I put a, a Hendrix riff, you know, kind of chord progression idea lesson up on this channel as well. And that was the most important thing for me figuring out major pentatonic playing was to learn how Hendrix plays over chords and all those little riffs he does for rhythm, it greatly will improve your major pentatonic soloing as well. So check that one out. But anyway, so I went right out of that, which is third position G major pentatonic, straight into, right, that's right, part of that D chord right there. It's also part of the C, it also has the G chord right here, the C chord right here. And then I, I'm still outlining that D, uh, that G chord rather, when it comes back around, right? So I'm, I know that here's a G chord I can mess around with. That C chord's right here, the E minor chord, right there, and the D right here. So I'm looking at all those chord shapes and just kind of thinking to myself when constructing a solo, okay, when that G comes around, I'm gonna pick a new spot rather than play the G here, I'm gonna go to the G down here and hit all the other chords, the G, the, the D, the E minor, and the C in this area for the next part of the solo. And then from there, when it comes around, back to here, I'm gonna start picking notes in a different fashion. I've been going down a lot, now I'm gonna come back up for kind of the crescendo of the solo, right, or whatever. And I'm just gonna outline the chords again, the notes of the chords with octaves, right? So I have my G here, you know. All these notes right here, I got my, my D note right there. Stuff that comes directly from the chord progression once again. And now I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Right, when I do that is when I start doing more of the octave runs. And then when I come back to F to G, I'm gonna go to G minor pentatonic. Because we've kind of left, once we go here, doesn't sound like, you know, happy-go-lucky G major anymore. So I'm gonna go to G minor. You can do any kind of riff that you want. And then resolve or here. Right, so those are just some ideas. Now let's go over just a couple of the riffs. I showed you the G, I showed you the D, I showed you all these other things that you can do, but let's just, you know, put together a couple of riffs real quick. Okay, like I was saying, this, bending into any major chord. This will work over any major chord in the progression. Now, I, I here, here to another major chord, I could have just gone down to D major and done that same thing, right? Right? When I, because I'm making that D chord right there, too. I could have done it on C. So I could have been like. Right, or something like that. You know, it just depends where you want to go or kind of how you feel, but you can do that over any major chord. So what you would do is just go down to basically the major pentatonic 
of the major chord that you're playing over. So if I'm in D, you know, when I hit that D chord, I know my D's right here, down one, two, three. Do that same riff, you know, just keep in mind if you're right here, this is where the, the pinky would be and you're bending into the third of the major chord, right? So you can be any anywhere right there. Now, I also worked out of this D shape chord as well. This is a G right here, right? But it's kind of has that D shape. So I went in, right? You can do all sorts of riffs like that to outline a G chord, right? So I'm just playing around with the notes. I went up a whole step, right? I directly went over the notes of the chord itself. Something as simple as that, right? So you can use all those notes of the chords without directly having to be like, which is a totally effective thing to do as well. You're just taking the exact notes, the third, the root, and the fifth of each chord and playing them as the chord progression goes by. So right there, you know, I could have been. Oops, sorry. And I just played the notes of the chords themselves. So that's another thing that you can do. So, and then chain those things together, you know. Right? And I'm just sliding down the scale notes itself. All I'm doing is. Picking two. Sliding down one. I just muted. When I did it, you know, you can also do like the sliding and then the uh, that kind of thing where you're grabbing the other note of the chord up here, right? That kind of sixth thing you might hear. That kind of idea just on lower strings, right? You can do that, like I said, knowing the Hendrix riffs over all the chords works great too because right it, there's that G D right that minor chord sorts of stuff like that. So you saw kind of how I went over the different chords and how I pieced together the solo that I did. Try working on a chord progression. If you have some way of recording yourself, I mean, everything has a recorder these days, an iPhone or computers or whatever, any kind of phone. I just have an iPhone. So I'm sure the droids or whatever have the same kind of thing where you can record yourself. So record yourself playing a chord progression. Try that chord progression. It's a great chord progression. G, D, E minor, C, you know. Don't noodle. Think of specific melodies. You know, even if you can't sing, chances are you can hum in your head. <laughs> and have pitch in your head where you can hear the notes in your head and just try to hum them in your head and then figure out where those notes are on the fretboard. Don't forget the vibrato. <laughs> really, really helps make things sound more vocal. Right, that really mimics voices. So try all that stuff, construct your own solo, and you will be writing melodic solos of your own.